story, the fantastically true story of Herbert A. Philbrick, who for nine frightening years did lead three lives. Average citizen, high-level member of the Communist Party, and counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. For obvious reasons, the names, dates, and places have been changed, but the story is based on fact. One of the most aggressive and powerful forces in fighting communism is the country's labor unions. You are about to see them clash with the force of conspiracy. Nothing on the radio. Doesn't add up. That's Eve Baker. Cool, competent, attractive. Very attractive. Looks like the typical young advertising woman. Matter of fact, she is. Only the product she's pushing happens to be treason. Starting an organizing drive. I'm just uh, helping out. N.E.R.I.C. That's an independent outfit, isn't it? A progressive union. Well, I thought Pendleton's was already unionized. What is? Their union and management are working hand in glove to defraud you. Only an independent progressive union can protect your rights. Pretty strong stuff. Getting anywhere? We will. Well, I'd like to stick around, but uh, I'm playing at being an advertising man. Mr. Newton's secretary called me something about a new advertising campaign. It was I called you, comrade. You? We have a new job for you. See Comrade Nick at headquarters. Okay. Looks like I lugged all this stuff for nothing, huh? Don't worry. You'll be doing some new copy. Only not exactly for Pendleton. FBI agent Harold Henderson believes in being well informed. It's part of his job. Mr. Henderson? That's right. My name's Benton, John Benton. I'm at the Central Labor Council. Glad to know you. That's something we can do for your outfit? Maybe. We got a problem anyway, a big one. Local 3133. Oh? Our organization consists of the heads of every legitimate union in this area. They're pretty upset about the way the Reds are moving in and taking over at 3133. I see. We've been in touch with Narek's national headquarters. They're ready to move in and clean house. The trouble is, we all know that the Hammer and Sickle boys are running the show in 3133, but we can't prove it. I'm sorry, Mr. Benton. I wish there was some way that I could help you. We have no jurisdiction over labor disputes. Oh, there are no labor disputes involved, not really. The comrades are manufacturing them as they go along. Even so, officially, there's nothing that the Bureau can do. And unofficially? Well, this thing is developing into a well-organized, subversive operation. Personally, I'm interested in who's behind it, where the orders are coming from. Well, that much I can tell you. Oh? Huh? From Moscow. Comrade Mitch is waiting for you at headquarters. You go see what he wants. Comrade Mitch doesn't like to be kept waiting. Okay. Okay. Okay, so long. Uh, comrade Mitch? Come in, comrade. You made good time. Mm. Comrade Baker said you had a job for me? That's right. In connection with the local 3133 organizing drive. We're throwing our full weight behind it. Uh-huh. Come with me, comrade. I didn't know that 3133 was a front organization. Nationally, it's not. 
We've managed to place some of our members in the local in uh, strategic positions. The present endeavor is to move as many shops as possible under the control of local 3133. Wouldn't it be easier to work within the unions that already have jurisdiction? Unfortunately, they're all short-sightedly vigilant. We've been unable to make any progress at infiltration. But I still don't get it. Say we do succeed in taking over 3133, what do we get? Just control of a few department stores, shoe shops, grocery stores? What's the objective? Higher echelons lay down the objectives, comrade. We merely carry out the orders. Sit down. However, in this case, it's really quite simple. As always, the party has two targets. One short range, one long range. In the short one, we will have the use of a front organization complete with treasury, dues and assessments, and a tidy pension plan paid in by the employers. It represents a considerable sum, let me assure you. And in the long range? We will have control of the sources of supply to the ultimate consumer. I don't need to tell you, comrade, what that could imply in a period of um, civil disobedience. Mm -hmm. I got it. Where do I fit in? You're an advertising man and a propaganda expert. We'll need new leaflets, slogans, throwaways, newspaper and media material. You know the routine. Any particular line? None officially. The general line should be, well, something dramatic, but palatable to the general public, the uh, average politically uneducated white collar worker. Remember, comrade, a labor slogan that is merely a temporary lie, a means to gain a limited end, membership, contributions, action. It doesn't need to follow the party line. It may even seem to be anti-communist. It is sufficient that it serve our ends. Yeah, I'm familiar with propaganda techniques, comrade. You report to Roy Burns at the shipping room of the Evans Distributing Company. It's a wholesale house in the garment district. I know the place. He's the head of the strategy committee for local 3133. He'll fill you in. Take over from there. Oh, comrade, as they say in your business, we want copy that sings the international. Well, comrade, what are you waiting for? Assignment, advertising campaign. Yeah, labor relations. You interested? We're interested in anything that your friends are up to. Well, I'll keep you posted. Good. Normally, we aren't interested in union activity. This is different. Yeah. Local 3133 is a moribund outfit. Well, the membership were lazy. They didn't vote. So the boys moved in. Now they're going to paint the town red. Big operation, huh? Yeah. It's well planned. You're going to know who's in charge. Well, I report to a man named Burns, Roy Burns. Do you know him? Yeah. No, he's fronting the outfit. I know he's taking orders from someone else. Mitch? No. No, it's still higher. This is on top level planning. We've got to know where the connection is, how it's being made. Well, I'll keep my ears open. Do that. Let us hear from you, will you? Yeah, you will. Okay, but it checks on your way. I'm looking for somebody named Burns. Yeah, it's me. Oh, my name's Herb. Mitch sent me over. Oh, that's good, yeah. You're the information propaganda guy. Glad to see you. He said you'd fill me in, get me started. Sure. Uh, we got an organizer meeting for the Templeton clerks night after next. We can use some literature there, you know, throwaways, pamphlets, anything you can do. Okay, any special line? Yeah. Written up fancy, but the gimmicks are there. Company dominated unions, slave wages, sweatshop conditions, you know, demand higher base pay, longer vacations, pension plan. I thought they had a pension plan at Pendleton's. Oh, we want a bigger one. Uh huh. Well, then you're going to concentrate on Pendleton's, huh? Nah, no, nah, that's just a start. We get in next week, we hit up a dozen typical shops, all parts of the city music stores, appliance shops, dry cleaners. Going to give them the full works. 
Picket routine. A little rough stuff, maybe. Well, 12 or 13 picket lines, that's going to stretch your membership pretty thin, isn't it? We won't need the members. Oh, one or two maybe in each place to make it look legit. Got some guys coming in from upstate, professionals. Oh, I see. Well, as soon as you knock that out, we'll have plenty more for you. We said you could be counted on to do your job and do it right. Thanks, comrade. Well, when can you get moving? How about tonight? Swell. Barely three in the morning. Comrades don't keep union hours. Your office would charge an advertiser plenty for a campaign like this. Mimeograph throwaways, hand-lettered placards and show cards, a two-color run mailing piece complete with photographs of sweatshop conditions, carefully staged by professional models, half-page display ads in the proletarian press, the communist press, that is. Wonder what it's costing local 3133. Uh, you know the answer to that. All they have to pay out is their independence. Comrade Burns is all set for tomorrow's organizing meeting. Literature, membership cards, he's even got a speech. Matter of fact, it's a pretty good speech. You ought to know, Philbrick, you wrote it. Now just sign these little cards, my friends. They're your passport to freedom. Freedom from company-dominated unions, from sweatshop conditions, from racketeering, from misuse of union funds. Yes, fellow workers, I'm not afraid to give it its real name. Freedom from slavery! A week, two weeks, takes time for a campaign like this to move into high gear, but it's beginning to show results. The stack of membership cards is growing. Of course, some people don't always believe all they read. And there are some people who don't believe all they hear. Some people need a practical demonstration. Maybe he'll be ready to sign up with local 3133, if he's able. Thinking of going skiing, Philbrick? sport. You're thinking of a little fishing expedition. Hi. Hello there. What do you think about this for a fly rod? It's one of those hollow glass jobs. Yeah, not bad. It's pretty light, though, and doubt it could catch a big fish. Oh, I want you to meet a friend of mine. It's Mr. John Benton of the Central Labor Group. This is the man I've been telling you about. Let's just call him Mr. X. Glad to know you, Mr. Benton. Glad to know you, Mr. X. Mr. Benton here is working for the organized labor. He's sort of a troubleshooter. He's trying to check on that trouble over at Local 3133. Oh, yeah. Of course, there was nothing that the Bureau could do about it officially, so I told him about you, patriotic private citizen who was close to the picture. He understands your position. Excuse me. I heard this is going to be sort of risky, but you've always been an awful lot of trouble. Yeah, but on the other hand, a local vigilant labor union, and there are plenty of vigilant ones, 
going to be our best defense against communism. That's what makes this kind of thing so hard to take. One outfit like 3133 hurts every other union. And if this keeps up, the merchants will have to ask for police protection against violence. They've been pretty reluctant to do that so far. You know what'll happen then? Yeah, sure. Commies will start screaming that the workers are being clubbed around, Gestapo methods, fascist police state. Pretty soon you'll really have labor trouble. Now, Mr. Benton, you better count me in. What do you want me to do? Well, what we really need is the tie-in. The missing link, the big shot. Same old story. I haven't got anything, really. All I know is that Roy Burns is taking orders from Mitch, and Mitch is taking orders from somebody else higher up. Whoever it is, he seems to know both sides of the picture pretty well. You figure he's tied in with the union as well as the party? Just a hunch, but that'd be my guess. Well, the national heads of the union can't act on hunches, but they're ready to move fast as soon as they get the facts. Well, I'll, I'll be in touch with you, gentlemen. Hey, Herb, before you go, try this. It's got a heavier action. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think with this one, I could probably catch a, a really big one. I hope so. See you. So long. Good fishing. Labor organizer, comrade. Works for an undesirable union. Those receipts will prove he's been taking kickbacks from the manager. Those receipts are forged? What's the difference? They'll be found on him when they take him to the receiving hospital. After that, the reactionary press will do our work for us. We should pick up plenty of disillusioned members from his union. makes nearly a thousand new members this week. If this keeps up another 10 days, we can go to the NLRB for certification. Mitch. Well, hello, comrade. Well, thank you, comrade. We're glad you're pleased. Well, after all, comrade, we were just following your orders. Oh, uh, yes, comrade. If you want a personal contact, we can start right away. Just a moment. Give me that address again, will you please, comrade? Yes. Yes. Right, I've got it. Oh, um, about 45 minutes. That'll give us time to get there. Yes, comrade, you can depend on it. 45 minutes. We'll be on the corner. Come on, comrade, let's go. The boss? should change, too. We should get a new slogan, something to keep up the enthusiasm of our new members, you know, to ensure that they'll vote the right way in that NLRB election. Yes, I suppose we will. What would you think of something like, uh, unify and strengthen? It's not bad. How about unify to strengthen? Oh, that's much better. That's much better, comrade. Let me get that down. Unify to strengthen. Yeah, that's excellent. Well, I, uh, I'll do some more thinking about this tonight and make up some more copy. Hey, I better get out of here. The boss will think I met a blonde. Well, uh, haven't you? <laughs> so long, Conrad. You don't know where to start looking, Philbrick, but the FBI will get to the meeting place, the dark room. Now, 
45 minutes from Pony Headquarters. You put them somewhere in this area or inscribed by these two circles. That's, of course, if they take a direct route. You got any chance of getting there in time? Some. We got a camera-equipped panel truck standing by. We'll also have a motorcycle escort till we get pretty close to the spot. Hit the lights, will you? I've heard about this, but I've never seen it done. Well, it's really pretty simple. You see, this common arc light throws a high-powered beam. Now, all of the rays are controlled by that mechanism so that they come out parallel, all extraneous light then being eliminated. The paper is placed here, perfectly flat on this metal. Then if there are any normal, invisible indentations there, they should show up and shatter a relief. I can't see a thing. Maybe the pencil didn't scribe hard enough. No, the contrast is too slight to be picked up by a human eye. Now, this camera contains a photographic plate of high contrast. Peter Eugene. He's Coast Business Manager for Neric. Supposed to be perfectly legit. Yeah. We'll send these shots back to Washington. I've got an idea that they'll turn up some new names and occupations for him. crimes, everything from mayhem to treason, and they get picked up for speeding. <laughs> Some coincidence, huh? Think so. Don't quote me, Benton. But I think that this will do the trick. You mean you tipped the FBI? I said don't quote me. See the look on that dumb cop face when the boss and comrade Mitch here got through laying down the law. <laughs> he was ready to go back to the police academy. Mm. <laughs> you, uh, you don't think it's, it's important, then? A traffic charge? Hardly. Well, what if the newspapers get a hold of it? That's your job, comrade. You know how to handle it. Police rousting, union busting. Believe me, they'd be smarter to drop the whole business. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Here. Take a look at these. Oh, not a bad likeness. Front page, too. Sure. Headlines. Read it. Local 3133 leader revealed a Soviet agent. Arrest for minor traffic violation brought to light today the fact that Peter Eugene, the so-called big boss of the local 3133 organizing drive, is in actuality Peter Yuganov, a registered propaganda agent representing a communist government. How about this? National Union head to expel Reds in local 3133. Documents carried by Peter Eugene, alias Yuganov, provide complete list of local membership having Red affiliations. Comrade, what are you doing? We'll, we'll need those when we go before the NLRB. Forget it, comrade. They've licked us. This time, but we'll make up for it. We'll never give up. Never. 
No, you'll never give up, comrade. But neither will the FBI. It's too bad. It's too bad. If the head of the organized drive was made public and the communist infiltration methods exposed, the party's threat to both labor and management was destroyed. Next week, we'll bring you another story from the files of Herbert A. Philbrick, citizen, communist, counter-spy. true story of Herbert A. Philbrick, who for nine frightening years did lead three lives. Average citizen, high-level member of the Communist Party, and counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. For obvious reasons, the names, dates, and places have been changed, but the story is based on fact. The Communists will go to any extreme to destroy a potential anti-Communist force.